Good morning and welcome to worship at Asylum Hill Congregational Church. Asylum Hill Congregational Church is an open and affirming congregation within the United Church of Christ. We are so glad you're here with us this morning. In these uncertain and unsettling times, we hope that we might remain or become part of your routine. We hope to offer you words of hope, bring music that brings comfort and peace, and most importantly, remind you that you are not alone. So we do have friends tuning in from all over. So first I'd like to send greetings and our deepest sympathy to the Sullivan family as they remember their brother and son, Boyd. Hello to the Toy family in Weymouth, Judy in Minnesota, Pam in North Carolina, Bruce and Sue in Arizona, and Marilyn in Florida, and many, many others. I'd also like to say hi to my mom and dad in New Jersey. And a happy birthday to a very special person, Erica's mom, Linda. Welcome to those of you who are joining us for the first time, and welcome back to those of you who have been worshiping with us for generations, and those of you who are with us from just down the street. We are grateful for each and every one of you and are glad that God has led you to your computer, laptop, or desktop to worship with us on this special day. So a couple of people that are tuning in from home today, you might notice, are Reverend Erica and Pastor Jordan, the two other members of clergy on our staff. For the near term, you'll notice that only one member of clergy will be present in the sanctuary for our Sunday live stream services. This decision is rooted in love and good theology, and it has received the support of the moderator and the vice moderator of the congregation. We are each so grateful to be feeling healthy and apparently free from the virus, but taking this extra precaution will help ensure that we keep ourselves and our families safe Further minimizing our risk will help ensure that we can love and support you without interruption. So although only one clergy person will be physically present in the sanctuary, we are all working closely together, virtually, to put our worship services together, and also you will see other members of clergy and staff through video. And this actually worked out pretty well this week, since this is the first week that Erica has not been in the sanctuary since last summer. I'd like to turn it over now to Jack, our Director of Music and Arts, who has an announcement for you. Good morning. So, in an effort to continue to keep ourselves up to date with technology, uh, we have a new technological feature for you to engage in this morning. For those of you who have been with us on Sunday mornings for live public worship in the past, you know that we have pew pads at the end of each row. And during this welcome time, we invite you to sign in, let us know that you're here. Well, we've uh, developed a virtual pew pad for you to engage in. And what I'd like to call your attention to now is that on your screen, you will see a URL address. Uh, with most, most browsers, you should be able to simply type in bit.ly forward slash ahcc welcome and hit enter and it will bring you to a page where you can sign in. However, if typing in a URL address is not your cup of tea, we have also created a link for you on the church web page. So if you go to the main church page and you see big live stream letters with arrows over to the right of that on a desktop, you'll see live stream here. If you click that, which some, many of you may have already done to get access to our broadcast this morning or other mornings, it brings you to our live stream page where there is a wealth of information that you may not knew was there. First of all, there's the click for live stream access. Don't click that now, you're already live streaming. Next, below that, you'll see click for Sunday bulletin. Many of you may didn't know that that was there. You could even open that in a new tab and have it on your desktop and refer to it or print it out beforehand and have it with you while the service progresses. 
But new this Sunday is the Click for Sunday Worship sign-in. And if you click that, it brings you to a Google Doc page where you can digitally sign in. There are only three questions. First, you type in your email address. Next, you type in your name. First and last is preferable, so we don't have to guess. Um, and anyone else who may be with you. And then also the yes or no question, are you a church member? And then click submit. It is that simple. You do have to answer all three of those questions in order for it to submit or it will not let you submit it. Uh, this is just another effort on our part to be able to uh, connect with those who are connecting with us perhaps for the first time even if you think the church already has your email address, I would just still, you have to put everything in there. Uh, and uh, we, we welcome this new opportunity to connect with you virtually. And uh, thank you for partaking in this and for staying connected with us. Tracy. Thank you, Jack. So today is what we historically called Partnership Sunday. It's a Sunday of celebration where we recognize the many amazing nonprofits and organizations that we work alongside. Often what would happen is these nonprofits and organizations would have representatives present. They would process through Drew Hall and we would get to meet them, find out ways that we can connect with them and volunteer with them. So now we're calling it Impact Sunday because we are really celebrating the impact that Asylum Hill Congregational Church in partnership with these amazing agencies has on its members, on the clergy, staff, city, and world. We're going to be talking a little bit more about some of our partners later in this program. And I would also like to take a moment to acknowledge and invite you to pray for our Muslim brothers and sisters who are observing the holy month of Ramadan. Ramadan is a period in which the Muslim community pray, fast, and reflect. Similar to Christian observances, fellowship, community, and communal worship are usually an essential and beloved part of this tradition. And now, like us, they're learning how to do this in a brand new way. So please keep them in your thoughts and prayers. And finally, I have two programmatic announcements for you today. First, we are planning to acknowledge and honor first responders and healthcare workers. If you or someone you know from the congregation is serving or is retired from one of these essential professions, please let us know. We'd really like to include everyone, both people providing care and those who are in supporting roles. If you have a name to share with us, please either call the office or email info at ahcc.org. And second, beginning on Thursday, we're starting a series of adult education programs that we are really excited about. There will be 12 different Zoom discussions and workshops that will be held on Thursdays at 7 p.m. and Sundays at 3 p.m. We'll be sending out more information by email, so if you're not connected with us or receiving emails, please let us know so we can make sure you're included. This Thursday at 7 p.m., we have a very interesting subject. It's called Staying Safe in the Era of COVID-19. It'll be hosted by our beloved church member, Dr. Jim Cox Chapman. There you can learn some data and best practices and have some of your COVID-related questions answered. So if you would like to get on our email list, again, please call the office or email info at ahcc.org. Let us now transition our hearts and minds to a time of worship and prayer.
please join me in the responsive call to worship. We need your presence on the long road, Lord. The road between fear and hope, the road between the place where all is lost and the place of resurrection. Like the disciples walking the road to Emmaus, we are in need of your company. Jesus, stand among us in your risen power. Let this time of worship be a hallowed hour. Living God, long ago, faithful women proclaimed the good news of Jesus' resurrection, and the world was changed forever. Teach us to keep faith with them, that our witness may be as bold, our love as deep, and our faith as true. In Jesus' name, amen. So on this special Impact Sunday, we would like to share with you a three-minute video that introduces you to some of the amazing organizations that partner with Asylum Hill Congregational Church to bring love, healing, and peace to our community.
thank David Figluzzi for putting that together. David Figluzzi put a lot of time into helping us see the names of some of the many organizations that we work with. And we are so blessed to work with these groups that provide food, shelter, love, and hope to people of all ages around our city, state, and world. And one person who has worked closely with us on this is the mayor of Hart Hartford, Luke Bronin. And here we have a greeting from the mayor. Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Luke Bronin, the mayor of Hartford, and I'm so glad to be with you at Asylum Hill Congregational Church for Partnership Sunday. Uh, you know, in this unprecedented time, uh, when we are all physically apart from one another, but when the needs throughout this community and communities across the country are greater than ever, uh, partnerships and collaborations are more important than ever. And so many people in this city are stepping up and supporting one another. And it's been a beautiful thing to see. And our faith institutions have really been at the lead, whether it's partnering together to distribute food, to make sure that uh, our neighborhoods still have access to fresh, healthy food, whether it's stepping up uh, hand in hand with the city as Asylum Hill Congregational Church has done uh, and been willing to open up space for a shelter annex or for child care facilities, all of those partnerships make such a difference. Uh, so I'm incredibly grateful to Asylum Hill Congregational Church and uh, we're all gonna have to continue working together in new ways, in creative ways, in unprecedented ways uh, at this time of extraordinary need. Uh, we know that one of the ways we work together right now is by staying apart, but there are many other ways that we work together right now to help families in this community and communities all across the country get through this time uh, and hopefully uh, return to normal with a stronger sense of unity and community and faith. Thank you so much and have a great day. Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Luke Bronin, the mayor of Hartford. Thank you so much, Mayor Bronin. Sisters and brothers in Christ, God invites us to bring our doubts and fears, our joys and concerns, our petitions and praise, and we can offer them up. Please join our minister for early life, Pastor Jordan, for the prayers of the people. At this time in our world, we are unable to be physically present with each other, but we have plenty of ways to be spiritually and emotionally connected with each other. One of the most important ways that we can do this is through prayer. Let us pray together at this time. Gracious and loving God, we come to you today with so many things on our hearts. We know that you created this world as an act of love and created each of us in your own image. As we continue on in this Easter season, we pray that you would show us how to continually resurrect our lives in ways that are pleasing to you. Grant us the grace and wisdom to share your story with the world. For many of us, this time is filled with uncertainty and loss. We continually look for places of joy and hope, but admit that sometimes we come up short. We pray that you would point us in the right directions and remind us that each day is an opportunity for moments of hope and that they may be found in places we never thought to look before. It seems that everywhere we turn these days, we are confronted with change. We admit that some of us don't like this, but we pray that we can surrender to your will and open ourselves up to new ways of flexibility that in turn fosters resiliency. We pray for parents and caretakers, for those who wish they could see their grandchildren or nephews and nieces, godchildren and students, for those who never thought they would be stay at home parents while also trying to make full-time work happen. 
We pray for patience and an understanding that the most important lesson we can teach right now is love. We pray for the hands of those who work tirelessly to keep us going, for the ones who ring up our groceries, restock our shelves, make our pizzas, and sew our masks. They are heroes, and we ask that you, God, would fill them with reminders of appreciation and strength. We pray for those who are experiencing unemployment and underemployment. God, we pray that they be surrounded by empathy. We pray for the doctors and nurses and janitors and first responders who put their lives and bodies on the line every day so that we can have hope for a future. Gracious God, we also as a congregation pray this week for Allison Howard's mother. May she be filled with strength and good health. We pray for Jeff and Tina Giddings on the death of Tina's aunt Myrtle Ty. May they be filled with grace and comfort during this time. And finally, God, we pray for all of us who may feel tired or stagnant right now. May we remember that our bodies are not simply tools for productivity, but vessels for our souls. We pray that you would help us remember that we are living, breathing, dynamic realities that need rest, quiet, and time. But most importantly, we need to connect. Gracious and loving God, we come to you today with these prayers aloud, but so many more in each of our hearts. Descend on us once again today with your spirit of unity and healing. And above all, God, we thank you for sending us your son who taught us to pray. Our Father who art Born in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Mindful of our critical partnerships and the positive impact that this church community has had on the world, I invite you to take this offertory time to consider how you might contribute your time, talent, or resources to help strengthen these partnerships and increase our impact. Should you feel called to make a financial contribution, you can do so safely through a link at ahcc.org. Listen now to a story of one of our parishioners who is benefiting and serving one of our amazing partnerships. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Townswick and Tracy asked me to talk about my experience at FoodShare. Um, I basically just was tired of cleaning my kitchen and watching TikTok videos and I was trying to think of something I could do that was uh, tangible to help others. And so um, I organized a group of friends and we signed up with FoodShare, which is foodshare.org. And um, we went last Saturday, it was very easy. It's a three hour shift. They ask you to sit in your car before you go and then they open up the doors, you go into your station, they give you some training, you put on your gloves and your mask and you load food items and it goes down a conveyor belt. And I personally loaded um, beans and peanut butter and canned chicken and then it went to the next station and they loaded rice and pasta. Um, and there's uh, music blaring, it's very festive, so the time just flies by and it's a lot of fun. And so again, that's um, foodshare.org and that's if you wanna donate, volunteer, or if you need food assistance. So that's all. So thanks friends, um, miss you guys and stay safe. Mwah. Thank you so much, Sarah. 
So some of you have expressed some sadness about how difficult it has become to volunteer and serve, especially those of you who are in higher risk categories and you may not be able to volunteer in person like Sarah had. But we have an idea for you. We invite you to pick up a few extra groceries this week for food share if you are safely able to do so. Or you may want to sew a few masks, perhaps, that we can donate to outreach workers or unsheltered people in our area. Drive through our parking lot between 10 and 12 on Saturday coming up. We will be setting up cones to ensure that there is a very clear path and direction for you to safely drive through. We would love for you to wave to us, the AHCC clergy and staff, from a safe distance from your vehicle. We would love for you to receive a blessing from us and a distant air hug. And if applicable, it's an opportunity for you to drop off some food for food share or any masks that you might have made that we can share. Thank you so much and we hope to see you Saturday. Join me now in a spirit of prayer for our prayer of dedication. Generous and providing spirit, use these gifts of our time, resources, energy, and prayers to strengthen those who need support, to inspire those who feel hopeless, to help to feed the hungry and clothe the naked, and to spread love and kindness. Amen. So our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke, the 24th chapter. If you would like to follow along in your Bible at home or on your smartphone Bible, it's Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? He asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven, and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way, and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread.
So this third Sunday of Easter brings us to the story of Jesus revealing himself to two disciples that he met on the road to Emmaus. The period immediately following the crucifixion of Jesus was full of uncertainty and fear for the disciples. Their world was turned upside down. They were afraid. They weren't sure how to react or what was going to come next. This passage teaches us that God is always with us, even in our hours of desperation. And when we open ourselves up to God's presence, we can fully experience God's love and assurance and help. So the story begins with two disciples on the road to Emmaus. It's not clear why they're going, but we do know that they are confused and unsettled. They have a lot of questions and no answers. One is called Cleopas, the other is unnamed. The writer's failure to provide a name is important. It invites us to imagine ourselves on that road with Cleopas. In this time of crisis and pandemic, we are like these travelers, confused and searching for help, struggling with fear and grief and uncertainty. We are trying to figure out what's next and we are wondering why this is happening. But really, let's be honest, even without this pandemic, many of us are dealing with a variety of struggles. One of my Hartford Seminary students wisely said, many of us have been managing our own personal pandemics long before this virus. Throughout our lives, we sometimes find ourselves wandering on that road to Emmaus. These are the literal or figurative places we go when life is simply too much to bear. The places we go to try to escape, hoping that things will somehow become more clear or make more sense. Presbyterian pastor Frederick Beekner says this, Emmaus is whatever we do or wherever we go to make ourselves forget that the world holds nothing sacred, that even the wisest and bravest and loveliest decay and die, that even the noblest ideas that men have had, ideas about love and freedom and justice, have always in time been twisted out of shape by selfish people for selfish ends. So where do you go to escape the harshness of reality, to avoid facing these disappointments and fears that have become part of our life, especially during this pandemic? Maybe the park, the workshop, long walks with the dog, rambling conversations with old friends, or maybe the roads we find ourselves on are not so healthy or life-giving. Maybe they involve compulsive shopping or gambling, substance abuse, workaholism, denial, impatience, or anger. Well, whichever road we take, God doesn't leave us stranded on that road. Luke tells us while the two disciples are wandering along, wrestling with the recent traumatic and unexpected events, trying so hard to find answers and to understand, Jesus himself comes up and walks along with them. This emphasizes Jesus' personal involvement. It shows Jesus' tenderness and his determination to be in relationship with his people. Translated literally, Jesus says, what are these words that you have been pitching back and forth to each other? Jesus journeys with them, listening, empathizing, and sharing. But when the disciples arrive at the village, he walks ahead of his, as if he were going on. They urge him to stay, and he agrees. Then he blesses and breaks the bread, and they recognize who it is. With a close reading of this text, we can see they weren't powerless. They were not simply waiting to be rescued, but instead they took actions that allowed for them to feel and experience the assurance and help of the Lord. The disciples demonstrated open minds, open hearts, and open spirits. 
So first, they had open minds. While they were wrestling with the meaning and impact of what had happened, even in their confusion, grief, and unknowing, their minds were open to the possibility that there was an explanation. They hadn't given up. They didn't throw up their hands and said, God is dead, and moved on. They may have never experienced that encounter with the divine had they done so. Their minds were open to the possibility that God was still present and alive even in their suffering, confusion, and pain. In his Bible commentary, 19th century clergyman Alexander McLaren said this, Perhaps the very doubting that troubled them brought Jesus to their help. He saw that they desperately needed him, for their faith was sorely wounded. The apostles themselves were wrestling with doubt and fear, the disciples. Likewise, we can and should wrestle with issues of justice and faith. We can be curious and ask for answers. In fact, this story implies that when we do, we are rewarded for the wrestling and uncertainty. It is in our wrestling that God knows that we are taking our faith seriously and that we haven't given up on God. It is in this wrestling that God knows we need God. And just as Jesus met the disciples on the road to Emmaus in their uncertainty and fear, God meets us on our dusty roads of desperation. In addition to open minds, the disciples demonstrated open hearts. They had hearts of hospitality, open to loving and serving their neighbor, even this man that they thought they had never before met. When they arrived at their destination, the disciples invited Jesus in. They insisted, actually, urged him strongly to join them. Their open hearts, their kindness and hospitality created the opportunity for Jesus to reveal himself. We, too, are called to invite Jesus in, even when, maybe especially when, we are struggling on our roads to Emmaus. We invite Jesus in every time we show kindness to our neighbor, remembering Jesus' words, whatever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters you did for me. When we make phone calls to high-risk neighbors, or pick up groceries for a friend or a parent, or pray for healthcare workers and first responders, or practice responsible social distancing, even in quarantine, there are so many ways we can demonstrate hospitality and kindness to our neighbors. When we invite our brothers and sisters in, we invite God in, just as these disciples invited in Jesus. So along with open minds and open hearts, the disciples embraced open spirits, spirits that were open to recognizing God. Jesus didn't simply say, hey guys, it's me, quit worrying. Jesus walked patiently with them, listened to them, assured them, and eventually revealed himself, not through words, but through the breaking of bread. The disciples maintained an open spirit to seeing and recognizing the holy in their midst. Sometimes maybe we can be cynical or hard-hearted. Maybe we feel too hurt or too broken or too ashamed to risk opening up and recognizing God's spirit in our lives. Maybe we feel like we have some explaining to do and we're not really sure that we're up for that. In some ways, maybe it feels safer and easier to close ourselves off to the possibility that God is walking the road with us. When we risk having an open spirit, when we are open to recognizing God's presence, we can call upon God and receive that assurance and help that we so desperately need. So this is what we need desperately when we are on that Emmaus road, when we are living in crisis. We need to feel God's presence in a real and tangible way. 
So here we are on Impact Sunday, Partnership Sunday. We celebrate these partnerships with these amazing organizations throughout the greater Hartford area and beyond. I think specifically of the Compass Youth Collaborative, a nonprofit in Hartford serving at-risk youth. The organization was founded 25 years ago by a group of teenagers. Recognizing the threat of gun violence in their neighborhood, they successfully lobbied the city of Hartford for a rec center in a middle school gym. Through the hard work of the founders, staff, and volunteers, this organization has grown and evolved and now serves over 500 youth and families every year providing life-saving school-based programs and actively mediating individual and group conflict to prevent violence and to build peace. Like these disciples, these residents, kids actually, of Hartford who were living in crisis did not sit idle. They weren't willing to give up. They weren't waiting to be rescued. They did it by themselves, and they did not let themselves be derailed by fear or uncertainty. They creatively and proactively had open minds, open hearts, and open spirits, and have worked hard to solve problems, create programs, and build relationships that save lives. Through supporting this and other organizations and agencies, AHCC is doing its part to spread God's love and kindness and have a positive impact on the world. Even in this crisis, as we wander this road of uncertainty and fear, know that these are some of the life-giving programs that you as a congregation are involved in. Supporting the teaching of dance and the building of confidence and relationships through Spectrum in Motion helping provide for those living with food insecurity through the Crisis Food Support Program, Loaves and Fishes and Hands on Hartford, upholding those seeking safety from violence through Hartford Interval House and My Sister's Place, helping empower families and neighborhoods through the Asylum Hill Family Center, the Center for Leadership and Justice, Greater Hartford Legal Aid, and Malta House, Supporting you through the Compass Youth Collaborative, the Boys and Girls Club, Camp Current, Connecticut's, The Village, YMCA, and Youth Challenge. These are just a few of the many groups we work alongside. Like the disciples, we have not given up on God. Even as we wrestle with our new reality, with our questions and frustrations, we as a congregation continue to engage the world with energy vitality, and hope. It is through these partnerships that we can actively follow the actions that the disciples taught us. These organizations help us keep open minds. They invite us to wrestle with issues of faith, justice, fairness, and equity, and help us discover ways in which God's peace and justice can grow. These organizations help us keep open hearts through opportunities to volunteer and contribute to the important work that they are doing. These organizations help us keep open spirits, inviting us to recognize God's presence in the world and God's action and inspiration through the activities and activism and outreach of these incredible groups. These partnerships allow us to open our minds, spirits, and hearts to our sisters and brothers who need us, even when we ourselves are feeling hopeless, confused, and despondent. They remind us that we are not alone, and they provide us with the opportunity to more fully experience God's help and assurance. By embracing an open mind, spirit, and heart, we can trust that through the peaks and valleys, we are supported and upheld by a living and loving God who is our companion on the dusty road of life, providing us assurance and help to endure and thrive. May it be so. Amen.
And now, may our loving Redeemer, who is our companion on the road to Emmaus, walk behind, beside, and beyond, even as we may be unaware. May our loving Creator break through disillusionment and despair that clouds our vision. And may the spirit of love help us to find our way and journey as messengers of the good news. In Jesus' name, amen.